From MTN News, this is Montana This Morning. More gang activity in central Billings. I heard boom, 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 boom. Bullets battering the home of a mother and her two children. The house was hit 10, 10 times. This morning, police continue investigating a drive-by shooting in an area where concern over crime grows by the day. And that's where we start this half hour. Thanks for joining us here on Montana this morning on this Tuesday, September 26th. I'm Kagan Harsha in for Augusta McDonald. Well, those gunshots rang out yesterday morning at this home in the 800 block of Terry Avenue. Police suspect that gang activity was involved, but they are not giving us any information about potential suspects. It's the third time they say they've had to respond to this same house just this year. But this time, the home occupied by a mother and her 17 and 8 year old sons was hit by 10 bullets. Thankfully, no one was injured, but neighbors in the area fear that one day they're going to be caught in the crossfire. Well, you know, when you hear that shooting, yeah, you, you know, something goes through the walls, you know, who knows where it's coming from. So, yeah, that's definitely a concern. Concerns over safety on Terry Avenue are nothing new. We actually dug into the KTVQ.com archives. We found a troubling number of high profile crimes happening in that same area over the past years. Headlines like one dead and one injured in separate billing shootings or two arrested in connection to a billing stabbing death. And then there's this one. A woman stabbed a billings man in a meth deal gone wrong. Neighbors still have concerns about uncontrolled intersections and a dangerous history there at the intersection of 10th Street West and Terry Avenue, the site of several crashes. The most recent headline, just this past Saturday, you might remember that large firework that blew out the previously totaled but truck window. Police did tell us they believe that firework incident is not related to the drive-by shootings yesterday. Well, our, our continuing coverage is also happening on Broadwater Avenue this morning where a man arrested for toting a gun outside the elementary school is back in his home this morning. Gabriel Metcalf was released on federal charges for that crime last week, but was immediately detained again on a warrant for an arrest charge dating back to 2020. Metcalf has posted bond. He's now going to be required to wear an ankle monitor until his federal trial, which has been set for November 13th. Well, time now to get a quick check on our weather with Miller. Miller, yep. it felt again like summer out there, kind of the time of year, a seesaw forecast. Absolutely, and today may be our warmest day of the week for some, but it doesn't last. Cold front mm. coming through tonight. Tomorrow morning is going to bring those temperatures down. That's round one. Round two, we're going to keep an area, uh, an eye on an area of uh, low pressure coming out of the Pacific Northwest. That's going to cool us down even more, maybe give us a better chance of seeing some rainfall. Let's take a step back in time. Yesterday, just a gorgeous day, warmer than average, a good 13 degrees above the norm. Of course, it was dry yesterday. It's been a very dry month, but we could wrap up the month with a decent amount of rain as we get into the weekend. Of course, we're piecing ahead uh, for the year, and we've already hit our annual total for the year, too. Temperature-wise, sitting at 53 right now at the airport, humidity at 59 percent. Winds out of the southwest at about 12 miles an hour. As we get up and at them, we're seeing temperatures this morning, uh, 30s, 40s, and 50s are highs today. You're going to see a lot more 80s across the area, even some mid to upper 80s, but it doesn't last. We do have that cold front coming through, like I said. What exactly does that mean for us? And we'll talk more about that low pressure coming out of the Pacific Northwest. Also, also, I want to <laughs> make sure he had a request for me to do this. and. Uh, I did not want to disappoint. You're a good man, Miller. Good man. Good morning, Columbus. The hometown. You got hello to the hometown of Kagan. I told Miller when I'm filling down the morning show, we got to we got to do a shout out to Columbus. Did I spell so. it right? You, okay, you got it. And, and you're Let from Columbus, sure. Georgia, so we have. Yeah, that that's common, just so. weird. I remember when you first came here, you said, "Was it your mom or something?" Says she loves you. She watches in Columbus. I'm like, "Are you from Georgia?" Well, that's correct. Yeah. There, my mom would never say that about you. It was my my aunt. Stephanie. Your aunt. Okay. Yeah. Mom feels completely different. So I'm, I'm sorry, Miller, you haven't won over. She's the one that sends the letters. Okay. Now yeah, she's, she's always, they're never signed. She'll, she'll learn to love you someday. I can't though. get enough of the harshes. I'll that's tell you right. right now. That's right. All right. Sorry, Mom. Well, bison are returning to tribal lands all over Montana, and that includes the Northern Cheyenne Reservation, which is making some big changes to the management of their herd. Our Jackie Coffin introduces us to the man leading that charge, now serving in a position that hasn't existed on the reservation in decades. On this 15,000 acre pasture southwest of Ashland, you'll find a herd of about 300 bison. They're a mixture of animals that have been here for 40 years, as well as a recent donation from St. LeBray. Determining the genetics of these animals is just one of the goals of the new bison management program. Without having a good healthy herd here, how could we call ourselves uh, good human beings, especially Native Americans, you know? 
This time last year, Brandon Small was doing something very different. I was an uh, employee for the, the coal mine and coal strip. Um, I, I worked there for 11 years. Yeah, see, we only have about five inches of water in there. And this herd of nearly 300 bison that have roamed northern Cheyenne lands since the 1970s looked different, too. Gone unmanaged and treated poorly malnourished, uh, no water. It hurt uh, to see that happen. She's an older cow. She's probably, I guess, close to 20. On his days off from the mine, Small started studying the animals and researching bison management, looking at the best fencing options and pasture to give the herd structure, leading him to a leap of faith. I, I think, to me, that's why I wrote the proposal, is because they, they should be honored and better taken care of than what they had been. And um, the, I, I just... I couldn't sit down anymore. I had to do something, you know. Small drafted a multi-year bison management plan and submitted it to the Northern Cheyenne Tribal Council in January 2023. The tribe considered and accepted hiring Small on as the first Northern Cheyenne bison manager in decades. Giving them the best water we can, giving them the best forage we can, giving them the most, the maximum amount of space we can to do what they do and just be buffalo. Tribes own and manage bison on all seven of Montana's reservations. Working in here and getting this water developed and working on the fence and working with it out here every day. Small's crew is working on a corral to round up the bison, count them and get an idea of their genetics. Due to years of inbreeding and the limitations of the pasture, the herd will be scaled down through hunting and then regrown. Hopefully within five years we'll, we'll be able to be at least 300 head, maybe 400 head. Bringing Small's goals for the herd closer. I hope we can uh, continue to use them for, for years to come, for future generations. Near Ashland, Jackie Coffin, MTN News. In our schools this week, students are going to learn the sobering realities of human trafficking from survivors themselves. An important seminar is happening at West High this week. It's hosted by an organization called Journey to Empowerment. Statistics show the average age someone becomes involved in sex trafficking is just 12 years old. Journey to Empowerment's goal is to bring awareness to not just West High, but other schools across Billings. And sometimes when there's textbooks, things online that we're required to teach, um, doesn't quite necessarily hit the mark. When this can be applied and kids know, hey, this is, this is real, this is what's happening around us, maybe we can do something to help um, themselves or somebody they might know. Officials say plans are also in the works already for seminars at Senior Skyview and several middle schools in the weeks and months to come. Happening today, President Biden is going to put his pro-union stance on display by joining the picket line to show solidarity with striking United Auto Workers. Union members first walked off the job 12 days ago at a small group of plants demanding better wages, a four-day work week, and other benefits. As CBS's Jared Hill reports, the president's trip comes just one day before former President Trump also plans to visit union members in Michigan. In a move the White House is calling historic, President Biden will travel to Michigan today to stand with striking United Auto Workers union members. If you take a look at the significant increase in salaries for the executives and growth of the industry, they should benefit from it. I always support the UAW. His visit comes a day before former President Trump also plans to rally current and former union members in Michigan. The former president is skipping the second GOP debate to be there. In a social media post, he claimed Mr. Biden's visit is only happening because of him. Both parties need to pay more attention to, do more to support us, and not just at election time. Multiple top Democrats and some Republican lawmakers have also visited picket lines since the auto workers first walked off the job 12 days ago. We've got to share this wealth and share this success. Negotiations between the union and big three automakers continue without a notable breakthrough. Last Friday, the UAW expanded its strikes against General Motors and Stellantis factories. Workers are asking for a 36% raise over four years and other benefits and protections. We would like to see all of our younger employees and our retirees all be able to support themselves. Ford was spared in last week's strike expansion with the union citing progress in their talks. But yesterday, the company said it's pausing construction of a $3.5 billion electric vehicle battery plant plant in Michigan until it is confident it can run the factory competitively. Jared Hill, CBS News. 
The University of Montana is back over the 10,000 student mark once again, actually enjoying its largest growth in student enrollment in 14 years. In total, 10,327 students are now enrolled at UM this fall. That's 372 students higher than in 2022. University officials say this growth in enrollment they believe is powered by nearly 1,400 new first-year students, which makes up the largest incoming class at UM in seven years. Its retention rate rose 2% to 76% this fall. That is an all-time high. Well, we want to bring in our Haley Monaco now with a story, I guess, to put a smile on your face this morning. I love this. A Billings business doing something unique for veterans. Haley, I know you checked it out yesterday. What's going on? That's exactly right, Kagan. You know, you can often tell a lot by what someone drives as a car. Right. And you can tell even more by their bumper or their decals they choose to display. Well, one tindo window tinting company wants us all to be able to point out the Billings drivers who deserve the heartiest of thank yous. It's a simple gesture one Billings business is offering as a thank you. And most veterans are proud of uh, their service. Right now at Auto Trim Design, veterans can get a large decal on their vehicles absolutely free. Warrior wishes Montana set up shop right outside the business Monday. We're hoping to see some good turnout. I'm going to do the back window of my vehicle with a flag. The flag is just one choice. Vets can also get a decal to represent their specific branch of service. Vice President Greg Rodriguez is an Army veteran, and while he has only been with the organization for a little while, he is thankful to be a part of the team. It's been gratifying to just be able to help veterans whether they're from the Vietnam era all the way to, you know, the fight that I was in. All a veteran has to do is head over to the lot, get their window measured, and pick a design. The business usually prints the decals on Thursday and installs them Fridays, but... What do you think of it? I love it. It was Rodriguez's lucky day as he received his free decal early. The only design everyone's seen is the color one with the eagle. So they do have multiple designs to choose from and can install on any vehicle. A simple thank you that means so much to veterans for their service. Yeah, such a cool idea. I know they plan to do this for a while. Yep, and they auto trim design plans to run the free decal deal for the rest of the year, actually. So, so I know we're going to get a bunch of questions here. Do you have to make an appointment? Do you just walk in? How's, how's that work? Nope. A veteran can just drive right up. They say who they are, and then they'll measure your window, and that's available anytime from huh. Monday through Saturday. Pretty cool to see. Haley Monaco, thanks for joining us. Thank you.